Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I pray that y'all having a blessed day. So I had this dream this morning. I woke up at 3.15. I've been in prayer because I'm like, do I share this? Do I share this, Lord? Is this coming from you? Because you might hear some say, like, if you wake up and you feel, like, scared, sad, or nervous, it's not of God. But God can be warning us, right? And we have emotions. We're human. So we might be like, oh, wow, sad into what we received. And I prayed on it. And I'm like, do I, do I, do I speak on this? But at the same time, I was laying in my bed because I was trying to convince myself to go to bed. And the Lord, I almost shut my eyes. And then I have remembered of my spiritual warfare, one of my spiritual warfare experiences. And I was like, yeah, I need to share this because the Lord is reminding me of what I went through. Reminding me um, about the spiritual warfare that we battle. So I'm going to share it with you. You can believe me if you want, right? You, you don't have to believe me. So I opened in my Bible and I went back, you know, online to uh, to the 15, 1599 scriptures in the 1900 scriptures. <clears throat> because it is said that in the 1969 scripture was changed spiritually. So I like to compare, you know, um, I like to compare and yes, Scripture now these days is, I can say, is more easy to read from what I've seen. But I was, I was putting my own Bible away. My Bible got attached to my keypad, like, and it was pulling a page out. So I was like, okay, let me flip and see what that is, right? And I want to share something with you because I, you hear a lot of people on here. Well, not a lot of people, a couple people on here saying that Jesus is salvation, right? And that we need to repent and that he's coming back. I'm so certain that he's coming back and I know 100% he is real. And because of my spiritual warfare, I'm afraid of him. Um, I'm afraid to be in judgment today and him look at me like, girl, you went through that. You know what I'm about and you still chose to do your life the way you wanted your life. No, that ain't gonna happen for me. Um, and I'm not gonna be perfect. Nobody is. I might mess up and I might pray on it and I might repent and I might, um, but what I'm going to do is better myself to not make the same choices, to not repeat the same actions. So it's in 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> We're going to go to verse 6. I'm going to try to read it all to you. My throat is a little itchy. Um, I'm getting better. And it says, working together with him, then we appeal, to, excuse me. Working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time, I listened to you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is a favorable time. Behold, now is a day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we command ourselves in every way, but <clears throat> by great endurance and afflictions, hardships, Beatings, imprisonments, riots, labor, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are all treated as impostors, yet are all true as known, and yet we, and yet well known as dying, and behold, we live as punished and yet not killed, <clears throat> as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet processing everything. We have spoken full, freely to you, Corinthians. <clears throat> Corinthians, our heart is wide open. You are not stricted by us, but you are stricted in your own affections. <clears throat> in return, I speak as to children, widen your hearts also. So remember, um, we can endure, you know, afflictions is a hard time, hardships, hunger, sleepless nights, labors, but the Lord is going to be with us. The Lord is going to be with us for our salvation and to get us through that. But you have to believe and have faith. And now I'm going to share... Um, it's a couple hours later because I wanted to make sure um, 
I want him to pray on him, be in the word, and ask, Lord, what was this? And you should do the same. Whatever message you receive from anybody, you, you should do the same. But as my life is getting back to normal, because <clears throat> like I said, the main change in my life is that I have patience, I have more understanding, not for myself, but for others. For others, um, my intuition is very strong. Um, and it, it is very strong. And I believe that our intuition is somewhat of the Holy Spirit trying to guide us in this thing called life, right? Because sometimes we go into things or we want to make moves, we want to speak, and we're like, no, we shouldn't say that, we shouldn't do this, or we should do that, we should move, but we don't, we stop ourselves, right? Because we give ourselves, we give ourselves every other reason, every questions, right? And that's why sometimes we don't see change or we fall back and we wonder why things are the same. Um, so let me share my spiritual experience and for my whole life, I know that, like, right, we live here, but I know, like, everything just seems off to me. Everything seems wrong. wrong. <clears throat> if you want to fix certain things, right? And I love people, and I can honestly feel, like, the hurt in, in certain people and things. And I always wore this earpiece most of my life, and I didn't know why. And let me tell you something. The right ear responds more the right ear responds more to speech and logic while the left ear is more in tune into music, emotion, and intuition. Okay, so it's proven that the right ear responds more to, to speech and logic, right? So if you have something in your right ear, you're not able to hear as much or to receive, right, with the information that you should be, okay? And if you have your left ear open it's more in tune to music emotion and intuition okay so <clears throat> i'm going to share my experience and then i'm going to share the dream that i had so going through my experience and through spiritual warfare i was at the dentist's office and i was already seeing i was already experiencing different different emotions right different feelings i could see certain things and hear certain things <clears throat> but I was at the dentist's office and I was already connected spiritually. Um, and as I was sitting sitting there getting my tooth checked, right? Um, my dentist started like cleaning this tooth going in and out, in and out. And by keep in mind, I had this earpiece in already. I didn't have music, but I had this earpiece in. And he said, eat the forbidden fruit, eat the poison apple. Come back to me. And I took his hand out of my mouth real quick. And I said, what did you just tell me? And he said, what? And I said, you told me to eat the forbidden fruit, eat the poison apple. He said, I did. And his assistant looked at him and said, yeah, you just told her that. So he finished looking at my teeth. He was so red and so sweaty. Right? He came back in. He had his hands crossed. Um... Now, I would never forget that experience. I know that the Lord is real. I know that my dentist is probably tripped out, right? But remember, if you have an earpiece in your right ear, right? Because the right ear responds more to speech and logic. So you're hearing, you're receiving, right? And I don't know if that had any connection. But my intuition, because most people would just probably sit in their chair and like be like, what just happened? Did he say that, right? I'm the type of person that if y'all can see, like, I don't care. I speak my mind. I know how to enjoy life. I'm like, when I go to the gym with my daughter, right? I'm like dancing and listening to my music when she's like, mom, be quiet. Everybody's working out. And I was like, what does that have to do with me? You know what I mean? Like, I'm my own person. I don't follow what everybody else does or what everybody else says is normal, right? Of course, got to follow the law because there's consequences to everything. But... That just reminded me that the enemy can use anybody at any time without even individuals knowing that they are possessed, right? Knowing that they are possessed. And that was just one experience. For most people, they'd probably trip out, right? I was like, dang, this is beautiful. This is amazing that I get to experience this. This is amazing that the Lord wants to save me. This is amazing that the Lord is showing me what we battle every day. 
So yes, when you see these YouTubers talking about casting out demons, that we can be, you know, we can have spirits. Not everything is a spirit. No, but we do have control over the decisions we also make. <clears throat> so I just want to remind you that we, the spiritual warfare is real. It is very real. And um, I want to talk about the dream that I had. So as I was sleeping and laying there, I woke up to a bunch of kids standing, right? A bunch of kids standing. And like these kids were standing in a wake. But behind them, there was like this black, this black wall. And all you can see was like their souls and spirits, like trying to come out of this black wall and screaming for freedom, screaming for freedom. Now I've talked on my channel that our children are in trouble. This generation is in trouble. If you look at this generation of kids, right, they take our future to the next level. And a lot of children are hurt. I know COVID did a lot of damage. A lot of children were stuck in their homes with rapists, abusers. Um, even, in, even in good homes where the parents were stressed, not only did they have to work, but they had to pay attention to their kid. Right? So right now, our kids need help and need to be... We need to show them attention. We need to love them. We need to guide them in the right place. You know, my daughter went to school two days ago. And this young boy stabbed himself. First, this young boy told the teacher what he was going to do. And because she didn't believe him, she didn't say nothing. And he stabbed himself because he was afraid to go back to juvenile. My daughter took a picture. There was blood, like good-sized blood on the rocks. And I was like, I didn't let her go to school. I don't even mind if she doesn't go to school today. Because my thing is like, he was so scared to go back to juvenile. But did he have the help? You know, sometimes us parents, we want to work so hard. We don't see the emotional side of our children, even when we're trying to do good. Right? I've talked about my, my daughter over COVID lost four of her, five friends to suicidal. The last friend I can remember, I'm going to repeat this. Her mom, his mother called and said, did you see anything different? And, she, and my daughter told her, yeah. He said he felt lonely and he didn't, he wasn't looked at. And this mother wasn't the type of mother that went out. She was a mother that worked two jobs to support her son. That mother, I could hear her scream from the other side of the phone. And I told my daughter to go outside because she had this feeling of like, I caused my child's death. Our children might seem okay and they might tell you they're okay, but deep down inside they're hurting. A child needs understanding, right? The growth. They need to be, they want to know, they want conversation, they want to be seen. And I truly believe that this is a message that our children are in trouble. And we need to be attentive parents, we need to be understanding, we need to be patient, and we need to be kind. And we need to focus on our children. There's so much changing, and like I've said before, the future says that technology is about to take over. And only a certain percentage will be able to be in that field in the future. Look at where our children are headed now. Do you think they're going to make it to the future? You see young kids, girls in prostitution, drugs, you know, falling praying at such a young age. It's so common now. I just pray that you pray on my message. And I pray that you all know how strong and powerful you truly are. Know that now is the time that Jesus is our salvation. Things are not going to get any better anytime soon. And um, we need him more than ever. You need him more than ever. Even though you may think your life is perfect, if you have not repented and if you've not given yourself to the Lord, you still must do that. So I pray that you all know how strong and powerful you truly are and have a blessed day.